That Maryland-Michigan State game features a dynamic Terps offense that totaled 629 yards against UConn. Ty Felton led the way with two TDs, 178 receiving yards, most for a Terp in six years, and the most for anyone in the Big Ten on the opening weekend. Also had a 19-yard run. And Ty Felton joins us now for our big interview. Ty, congratulations. Had a really good yeah. opening weekend for you and your team. I realize it's early. But leading the Big Ten in receiving yards one week in, how did it feel to start the season on such a positive note? Uh, it felt great. Uh, Coach Loxie emphasized all last week, starting off uh, like a rocket, having that launch that we should, uh, just being dominant, that we know this offense can be through tra throughout training camp, throughout spring ball, just putting in all the hard work. So it, it was awesome, and it, and it was a great feeling to, to see it come out to true fruition last week. And it wasn't just a great start for your team. It was a great start for you. And it's funny, if there was any doubt – about the role that you were going to play in this offense. I think it was erased on the very first drive, right? The first play <laughs> went to you on a 19-yard run. The first fourth down went to you. You guys converted it. And then, of course, you scored on the touchdown. What does that say, the fact that in those critical situations they were going to you from square one? What does that say to you about the confidence that this staff has in you? Yeah, it all starts with the belief they put in me. Uh, they trusted in me the last four years I've been here. They see my growth. And, and also, uh, I want to thank the team for just how hard they pushed me. And uh, those guys, a lot of guys on the team inspired me to be great every day, like Dante Trader, a lot of the guys, Roman Hemby, a lot of guys I came in with. So just, uh, just how hard the team pushes me to work every day and practice, how hard I work in practice. And, and just very thankful for the coaches to, uh, to put the belief in me they've been uh, showing in my last four years. We're going to talk about the second touchdown. I want you to take us through it in just a second. But tell me about the message Coach Gaddis had for you guys before you went out onto the field for that drive that, that ended very quickly with that 75-yard TD. Right. Uh, the drive before, uh, we had some of the younger guys in the receiver. Uh, Coach Gaddis had came up to uh, me and Kaden Prather. He said, uh, you guys got one more drive, one more drive. <laughs> And in my head, I'm like, okay, I got to end this drive as fast as possible. So I got the play call. I ended up getting a little hitch route in, in, in the boundary. I ended up making something happen. Juke one guy. Then I felt another guy come and spun off him, and I seen a lot of green grass. So I just took off uh, with, the, with the speed I know I have and ended up making something happen. That's got to be a great feeling when you see that open yes, field uh, ahead of you. 75-yard play there. I would say you did end that drive pretty quickly. Got to rest the the rest of the way in that game. Obviously, it's going to get more challenging as, as it goes on for you guys. But I, I, I want to, before we talk about Michigan State here, I want to go back a little bit. I think your recruitment is really interesting. Your junior year of high school, you were prepared to commit to Virginia Tech. And then disaster struck. Take people back to that moment and, and what went through your head. Uh, yes, sir. Uh... My junior year, uh, third game of my high school season, varsity, uh, we were playing on a Thursday, Thursday night. I don't know why the game got moved to Friday or Thursday, but I ended up tearing my ACL on punt return. So going in my junior year, I had around like 20 offers. And uh, after I tore my ACL, I had about all my all the schools I had uh, backed off off me. Uh, Virginia Tech, that was my first offer. Off, obviously, being from Virginia, an in-state kid, I wanted to go to Virginia Tech. And then after I tore my ACL, I told those guys that I was ready to commit to them. And uh they, they backed up off me because of the ACL. They didn't know how I was going to come back and uh, um, persevere from that. So as, as that process was going on, Coach Locks and the whole staff, they were still recruiting me very hard. And I ended up going to Maryland, sticking with, uh, with Maryland throughout the loyalty they showed me. So that was really big for me. Yeah, what was Coach Loxley's message to you as he kind of stuck by you where maybe some others didn't? Uh, yeah, this is the, he he's seen the hard work I put in throughout high school, so it was just his belief in me. He he saw the little details and fundamentals I was and how I just went about the game on and off the field in high school, and his belief in me and the whole staff just how much they uh believed that I was going to be a b even better player I was before the ACL. So it was just belief in me, and it's obviously a blessing in my faith in God. Also, this this the mental battles I went through throughout that situation, losing all my offers. Uh, and, and stuff like that. So it's definitely uh, the belief in, the belief of the coach uh, put it in me and then um, my, my faith in God for sure. And then you get to Maryland, and, man, that was a loaded receiver room when you got there. I mean, Rakim Jarrett and Jay Sean Jones and Dante Demas. What did you learn from those guys early on in your career that you've been able to carry forward having the great success you're having now? 
Right, yeah, coming in, I had a lot of guys to look after. Uh, one of my favorite guys was uh, Brian Cobbs. Uh, that was an uh, older guy when I came in. Uh, him, me and his cousin actually went to the same high school, so he taught me a lot of things, uh, how, how to go off the game, on and off the field, how to watch film, how to eat right, how to uh, recover, how to rehab and stuff like that. So just having all those guys uh, um, that were older than me being in front of me, it, it really helped me to, and turned me into the player I am today because I watched how all those guys uh, went, on, went, up, went about things on and off the field. Let's focus in on the here and now. I want to ask you a little bit about Billy Edwards. It was clearly a battle when we were at camp. He certainly had not solidified himself, at least in our eyes, as the starting quarterback. But, man, he was really good here in the opener. We've all known for years how well he could run it. He threw it extremely well. Tell people something they may not know about Billy, who has persevered, who sat behind Leah, kind of knew his place, and now has seized this moment to become the starter. Right, uh, Billy, his determination to be great. This how he comes in the building every day, uh, how he works. He's, he's in the building from sun up to sundown. Uh, he doesn't leave the building until 10, 11 o'clock at night after practice. So his determination to be greatness, uh, I see it every day. I've known Billy since high school. We had the same trainer in high school. We worked out together. So his determination to be greatness is one of the big things that stand out for, for, uh, for me. This has become a really good program, Ty. You guys have won three straight bowl games three years in a row. You've won a bowl. It's the first time that's ever happened in the history of Maryland football. It's a consistent winner, but you haven't had that breakthrough. As you probably know, Maryland hasn't beaten a ranked Big Ten team since entering the league. What will it take to take that next step here for Maryland football this year? Yeah, for sure. It all starts in practice. Uh, one thing Coach Locks has emphasized is that the, the show is practice and the practice is the show. So whatever we're doing in practice, how hard we're going to practice, uh, it's going to make our job easier on, on game day because we did, did it throughout practice. So just making sure throughout the week, Monday through Friday, we're focusing on the small details and fundamentals and it's going as hard as possible throughout practice so we can end up getting those dubs on Saturday. Well, the next Saturday dub that you guys are searching out is the one against Michigan State as we talked about coming up this weekend and you and I were talking down the line before we started the interview of the challenge of preparing for Michigan State just because they have an entirely new coaching staff. Give us a sense of what you've been able to piece together from the Spartans from that one game and maybe from some other film that you watched to prepare. Right, yeah, definitely. Those guys having a new coaching staff and it's uh, like um, it being early in the season, not seeing as much film. But uh, their defensive coordinator, we know uh, he's from uh, Minnesota, so we've been able to tag in some film on that. And then um, I've gone against the secondary a couple times before. We've gone head to head, a very competitive secondary, very competitive team. So, uh, yeah, just looking back on previous film from previous years and uh, just gathering as much information as we can from this year to, uh, to go out there and be highly prepared on Saturday. Well, can't wait to watch that one Saturday right here on the Big Ten Network. Again, Ty, congratulations. Had a great showing against UConn. Really looking forward to seeing what you and the Terps have in store this year. Yes, sir. Thank you. I appreciate it.